transformative action policy in politics has led to the rise of women representation in parliament up to 35%. But as compared to the men, there are gender gaps. Welcome to Women Rise Up. Now, women participation and leadership in decision making is of utmost importance for a country like Uganda to achieve its development goals. Well, on our discussion today, we are going to talk about on how we can inspire more women and empower them to lead in a society like this. We are going to watch a short film called Husband Support and we shall be right back with our discussion. Don't go away. Jodiu <laughs> Where madam? Where tell of Berati? Or a woman called you, Sella? Young Berati? Umanva? Fellow you? Fellow you? Eh? Josie, it's a two. It's a minute to one position, my dear. It's a minute to one position. Where? Where? Lady, lady, you see here. Me, Joe Godfrey and Amanda, we have been here for 20 years in this market. And men, this leadership, men has been oppressing, oppressing you people. It is time. It is time for you to vote, to, to, to give vote to my wife. Hey, you see the benefit of new leaders. Down it to arrow. Down it to arrow. One of them kid who can. You keep down the only one. No killer word me. Me and I need to help each one me. Mala chio, I think I want to chill by down any. Me and I get bold, we get down. Down my mind, I'm new to it. Mind get good, get on my. Yes, you people. I'm going to bring my wife and she speak to you. You hear from her, okay? Yeah. I was been suffering, but I wanted you people to hear from her. Let me go and bring my wife and she speaks to you people. Uh, you people, I greet you again. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. I brought my wife. I promise you people that I, I'm going to bring my wife. I brought Melda is here. I don't want to talk on her behalf. She has been here. You know me, Godfrey, you know Melda. So let her speak with you people, you hear from her. But I beg you people kindly, give vote to my wife. So you can hear from Melda. Melda, speak to your people. Okay, thank you very much. Greetings, everyone. I'm Maru Unwen. I'm Maru Nyesi, Mr. Robert. I'm Maru Nyesi, I'm Melda. I'm Maru Nyesi, I'm Maru Nyesi. I'm Maru Nyesi. Ah, uh, here. Uh, she's new, she's new, yeah. She has just come. Oh, okay, okay. Um, as you all know, uh, this time is a time for election. And the comment, me yeah, or me yeah, let's tell me yeah, to chew for Aaron, no one was to get Aaron. So, um, this time I tell me, that would be a con, would be better, no? This time, experience, I I'm going to
I'll pour it. I'll check. 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 Maybe supplement, supplement to that. Ah, uh, uh, my wife is promising to set a committee, which she will pick some of you to be in the committee. She's trying to bring, she's trying to pick new people from this market, from the darkness to light. Ah, uh, she's going to do it. Ah, uh ha. -huh. <laughs> <laughs> posh, but I encourage all of us women to also take up other posts. Uh, it's time for us to wake up. Uh, we are not supposed to be just in the kitchen and in the, you know, the bedrooms and all that. But we need to go out there. We need to explore. We need to do other things so that we make our country a, a, a better one. I uh, thank you very much. I I pray that you people elect me. We work together and develop this market of ours. Thank you very much. Exactly. You know these days, women empowering has been so hard. Especially, there are few men like me who will give time to their wife to come and leave. But it, it, it is time for you people, you support my wife. Give her vote so that you see the example. So that other men, they also follow me. Okay? Give her vote. Give her vote. Thank you. Yeah. Mr. Godfrey. Oh yes. So it's true. Chairman. I've been hearing your Thank being... God, thank God that you have come. I was even almost mobilizing for demonstration. I heard that, that you were campaigning office. for my office seat. Who gave you the right? What do you mean on a post? Did you first consult me? Do you really believe Look that around, a look woman around. Can... How many men are here? Do you How really many believe men? believe that a woman Why do you want lead? to lead women? So it is time for women. Uh, let me finish. Do you really believe that a woman can finish? I mean can 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 lead? Why yes. not? Why not? And you think I can really hand over to, to, to a woman? When the time comes. Mr. Godfrey, if you think you chairman, can go... Chairman, chairman, we really appreciate what you have been doing. But let us give her time. Let's give time to women fine, also. Fine, fine. If you really think she can lead, no problem. Go ahead. But if anything happens, don't call me. It's okay, don't fine. Call me. It's okay, fine. Let's give chance to women. Here to find. Mm. I know she has the support of the people and I'm ready to hand our office to her next week. That's why I'm here. Yes, thank Let you. Let us so. allow chance to women. Okay? Let's give chance to women, Chairman. Thank you for understanding. Mr. Godfrey, I appreciate everything that you people are doing. It is okay. I had to rethink about what uh, happened in the market the other time. That's Auntie, why I came to you. Also, you have been working very well. You have been a very good leader. Only that let us give women chance. Thank you for acknowledging that. Thank you so much. Only that I wish her the best in our, in our new office and the best for her. That's Thank what I you for her. understanding. Thank you so much. Yeah. Have a nice time. All right, all right. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, Thank you please, so much. Madam. Have Thank a nice time. Thank you. Okay, okay. 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 nice time. Oh, I've been telling okay. you. Welcome to Women Rise Up. Now with me here, I have Honorable Dori Nanjura, who is the Deputy Lord Mayor. We are so glad to have you here, Honorable. Thank you so much. Yeah. Your leadership journey has been very inspiring because of, I was reading and it came back from even school. Just give us a history of your leadership experience and how, is, how it has led you up to that position you are in now. Well, thank you very much. I think I was um, lucky that uh, I was raised up by parents that never set boundaries between mm. one being a boy and one being a girl. Wow. So my father identified the leadership qualities in me mm. when I was still a very young girl and he has supported my leadership journey. Wow. He didn't only cheer from the pavilion but um, he's been there for me. If it means campaigning wow. on my behalf, my father has done that. And of course, leadership uh, goes hand in hand with reading because uh, recently I was challenging someone that um, if you're to do a simple research, 
uh, especially in Uganda, to find out what the women are reading and what the males are reading. Mm. Most likely you'll find the females reading about how to become good housewives, how to enlarge their hips, <laughs> yes, how to make their husbands happy. Mm. But if you do an analysis about on what the males are reading, you'll find most likely most of them are re reading about how to become better leaders, how to become empowered in business, mm. name it. So that creates a gap. Mm, yeah, you find that uh, if they bring a platform mm. for a, a female and a male, the males come out smarter simply because of that background. So I was lucky that at tender age, my leadership credentials were identified by my parents. And yes, they supported me to come through. I should say I've been a leader all my life. Yeah, and even at Makere University. Yes, I've been a leader since my primary hood. I've uh, been a leader since secondary days. And of course, at mm. Makere University, I should say I was one of the vocal student leaders. Mm. I was the guild vice president. And when I stepped from Makere, I went and competed in FDC. Yeah. Surprisingly, I was competing against men that mm. were much older than me. Yeah and I defeated them hands down, wow. yes. Yeah. We want to talk about the gender roles, of how people have stereotypes of what a woman should be doing and women in leaders, and, and, we, and we find that some women have been affected by this and the way people think, probably men are thinking in how a woman should be her position in the society. For you, through your experience, what have you faced while you were out there in the field? Well, I've um, faced a number of challenges, I think, uh, one of my biggest scenarios, especially for the current position that occupy as the deputy lord mayor, which yeah. is number two in the city. Yeah. Uh, to many people, it seems being married is a sign of um, effective leadership. And, uh, Can I please say this? Uh, definitely, that on, is wrong. Yeah, on Google, when you type in Doreen Nanjura, you're going to get a question. Is Doreen Nanjura <laughs> married? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. So that is something, you know, you post something and everyone is like, but is she married? Yeah. So even for brave ladies, even for courageous ladies yeah. like me that uh, have been effective to some extent, yes, yeah, still those stereotypes, stereotypes are extended to us. Stereotypes, People yeah. feel you are not capable enough. If you are appointed to a very big position, they tag, you know, they think it's because of your beauty. Mm. That is why you have gotten that yeah. position. So it has been one of my biggest uh, challenges, mm -hmm. but uh, thankfully I've managed to overcome that because uh, we have leaders who are effective. Of course, the other challenge that is affecting women, especially in Uganda, politics has been turned into a war zone. Personal, I've been tortured, I've been brutalized, I have been detained, I've been, I've been arrested more than 15 times. You know, some of the scars on my face are a result of me choosing to participate in politics. So. This, of course, has uh, restricted very many women yeah. from taking part in the politics of uh, this country. Yeah. And, uh, of course, not speaking about myself, but speaking about the other women other who women. are married, yeah. especially the married women. Now, let me talk as someone who is not married. But I honestly know some women have decided to abandon politics, to abandon leadership because they are married. Yeah. When the male counterparts are still in the field holding meetings, mm. especially most of the meetings actually take place at night. If you are a married woman, yeah, yeah. your husband expects you, you to, to be, be home, home at, at five. Time, yeah. yeah, so that has also affected yeah. women in leadership. Mm. What about the issue of finances? We really saw that the 2020 elections were involved a lot of money and there were some women who had to back out of, of taking up positions because of the issue of, of money, not being able to have this money for nomination. The nomination fees went higher as a way to cut out some people. What do you have to say about that? Well, that is one of the biggest challenges, especially in Uganda. Politics has become very highly commercialized yes so i know there are those that really had to stop midway i know there are those that had to abandon their ambitions uh, for example this is not a new scenario in uganda yeah. where if you have more money and yeah, you know nyanjura does not have money. much money you come and buy me out of the race you know yeah, so i have seen very many women mm. abandon their aspirations abandon their hopes simply because they do not have the mm. money simply because they cannot compete yeah. 
yeah. with those that have money. So yes, it's one of uh, the challenges that we have in Uganda and it needs to be addressed. Absolutely. Because we have laws in place, but yeah. like you know, most of the laws we have here are not implemented. Mm. Mm. Bribery is not allowed, mm, you know. True, Bribery is not allowed, allowed, but our voters in most cases will go with the highest the bidder. Okay. They'll even tell you so and so has not worked. Mm. But when voters are saying so and so has not worked, they don't mean that you don't bring out their issues. They mean that when their child is sick, you're never around to give them money yeah. to take that child to the hospital. Yes. We see that the past elections are going to bring new members of parliament, women in the 11th parliament. Now, of course, those ones who have never had experience in politics, for you as you are joining the field, what little challenges have you fought and what, do you, what can you advise those women now who are going to join parliament, no experience and, yeah, in politics? Well, like I've already hinted on one of the things they can do, that is uh, they should try to read, they should love reading and um, they should also try to identify, because when you read, yeah. you'll find uh, mentors that you've never met. Okay. For example, insist that I've never come face to face with most of the leaders that I look up to. Mm. Most of them have um, long gone, for example, the likes of Che Guevara, the likes of um, Malcolm X, mm. Winnie Mandela, you know, these are people that uh, have long gone. Mm. So when you embrace reading, sure. personally, I think you can really improve. But also, talk to the leaders that have been in parliament before and there are quite many yeah, sure. yes there are quite many some of them are very progressive some of them are retired yeah they can utilize some of the leaders that are there talk to them mm. uh, most of these challenges are not very hard to encounter yeah. yes because we have people that have lived these Who experiences these before positions. us yeah. so for me i think this is how i managed mm. you know that yeah. I managed to talk to people who were there before me. For example, Anne Mujisha was more like a mentor, okay. you know? so she would tell me, you know, you need to read this, you need to watch this, mm. you know. If a man approaches you, you know what I mean, if you also show that you're interested, definitely they'll, they'll also pick in, interest in you. But if you show them from the word go that, no, it's about leadership and not the body, yeah, sure. then they'll definitely have to let go of you. And also, the women leaders who are coming, they are going to parliament. Let them be a voice for the underprivileged women. Sure. Because honestly speaking, we are counting on them. So we want the women that will go there, call a spade a spade, speak truth to power, but represent the underprivileged women. Thank you so much. And as we ponder more on that point, we are going to take a break. And please join the conversation. We'd love to hear your comments and what you think. Our social media platforms are on your screen there. And please come to our Facebook page and Twitter handle on Women Rise Up. And we'll be right back. Welcome back. We're still here with Honorable Dorin Nanjura, the Deputy Lord Mayor. Now, Doreen, I'd love to ask you, what more can be done to, to level the playground, you know, to level the ground for, to increase women in leadership, different leadership levels? Well, um, first and foremost, I think uh, we need to invest in educating women, women okay. or the girl child. And uh, for me, this should start uh, right from where we come from. Okay. I, yes, right from where we, 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 uh, where we come from, when we are still babies, right? Because um, I'll take you back to Uganda. Mm. You'll find there's a way a baby girl is treated, right? There's mm. a way a baby girl is treated. There's a, a way the boys are treated mm. that if you're to even move around, I can even challenge you, go to any class of mm. pupils and ask, and ask the girls, you know? Most of them will tell you they want to be nurses, They'll always, you know, yeah. their aspirations are usually low. But you'll hear the boys saying, we want to be presidents, we want mm. to be doctors. So our, up, our upbringing, mm. you know, even in our homes, you know, you find parents are buying a boy child a car, yeah, they're buying a, the buy, a girl adults. child a, a baby, you know. Yeah, so from a baby. tender age, girls mm. are brought up knowing that for them they're supposed to be mothers, housewives and all that. So we need to 
to, to invest in education. Because for a lady who is educated, honestly speaking, you cannot compare her reasoning to yeah, a lady to who is not, not who has not gone to school. So most women fear to take up leadership positions because um, they are not educated. Yeah. But two, I think women also need to be economically empowered. Yeah. Because like I've already said, yes, even when we say the law should be implemented mm. and I would do away with bribery still we need money for money posters. For, we yeah. need money for we need money for banners, campaigns, campaigns mm. and all that, name it. So women also need to be economically empowered. Beyond that it is still going to be a very huge challenge. But also the policies need to be implemented. Mm. And I can cite an example of uh, my political party, and that is FDC. There's a deliberate effort of ensuring 40% of the positions in the party for women. are for are for women. Okay. Yeah, so I believe if the policies and the laws we have in place are implemented, yeah. then definitely we are going to see more women okay. taking up um, the leadership positions Roles, yeah. yes without that yeah. we still have a very long way to uh, we go. still have a very long way to go so for me yeah. those three issues mm. stand out yeah, education uh, economic empowerment yeah, and of course having the laws that are favor yeah. That women. are implemented. That are implemented. The policies are there, but they are not implemented. Exactly. That are implemented. Mm. Then we shall most likely see more women leaders taking up the positions. Okay. But also encourage the women. Come up. Contest. Because if Do you don't fear. come up and contest, there is mm. no way you're going to occupy these positions. True. There is no way you're going to become leaders. And for me, I've seen this from my own experience, that when you come out and contest, even when you do not win, when an opportunity shows up somewhere, someone will say, oh, whether there's this Nyanjula, much as mm. she didn't win, you know, we believe she's a good leader, we believe she can work. So women, yeah. please come up, contest. contest if the, you do not the contest, position. there's no you're going to become leaders. Okay. Yes. And what role can men play in our society to support women in the different levels of leadership? Well, first and foremost, uh, men need to become women activists. Because uh, as women, our voices may not be able to reach all corners. Yeah. There are tables where we do not sit. But uh, if men can also talk on our behalf, yeah. I definitely think we are going to reach very far. Yeah. For example, I'll take back to our African cultures. When a man says something, I think to a fellow man, mm. it carries more weight than when a woman says it. So men, need to become activists for women's rights. But tattoo and uh, our fathers, our grandfathers, you know, they need also empower us. Mm -hmm. And I'll take you back to our culture, where it is the boy child that inherits property, where it is the boy child that inherits land. So indirectly, the boy child is being empowered yeah. at the expense of the girl child. So our grandfathers, mm -hmm. our husbands really need also look at these issues yeah. and I believe that will make a very huge difference. They should also empower their women, you know. For, for a young girl that is out there who's watching right now, she's saying, oh, I want to be like the Honorable, what advice do you have for her who wants to achieve leadership like you have? Well, I think for the young girls out there, I would um, just tell them to believe in themselves because I, should, I can surely tell you that uh, I come from a very humble background. I come from one of the poorest districts in Uganda. Yeah. That is Chenjojo districts. I think one of the forgotten districts. Uh, I'm um, a born of 1989, born to a secondary school teacher and a P3 dropout. So uh -huh. leadership is not only reserved for, for those with from Harvard, you know, leadership is not reserved for those from rich backgrounds. We all can be leaders and we should all be leaders. And of course, there are some uh, traits that pay off, you know. Mm. For me, I think if you are a leader, you have to be principled, you have to be consistent, you have to be transparent, and also you have to respect yourself. And that will honestly take you places. Yeah. Thank you so much, Honorable. And as our conversation ends here, well, it's still going on on social media, on Facebook and on Twitter as well. Please would love to hear what you think. 
or your comments that you have upon supporting women in leadership and taking up different electoral positions. Well, until next time, we'll see you.